Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do some calculations in cardiovascular physiology. So here's our example. We've got an elite resistance training athlete shown over here on the right who is determined to have the following parameters during a 1RM deadlift at 500 pounds, meaning this is the maximum he can lift and we're measuring these parameters while he's doing the deadlift. So his blood pressure was taken as 310 over 270 which might seem abnormal, but it's actually, it's actually common to have blood pressures that get into the 300s in very heavy resistance training, acutely that is. We've got a heart rate of 170 beats per minute, an end systolic volume of 70 milliliters, and an end diastolic volume of 350 milliliters. And we want to calculate the following six parameters. One is the pulse pressure, which we will then use to calculate the mean arterial pressure. And we want to calculate the stroke volume, the ejection fraction, cardiac output, and then finally the total peripheral resistance, which we'll need both the cardiac output and mean arterial pressure to do. So let's actually go over uh, to the printer paper where I will actually work these problems. All right, so I've transcribed our data here that we're given. We have a blood pressure of 310 over 270 millimeters of mercury, have a heart rate of 170 beats per minute, an end systolic volume of 70 milliliters, and an end diastolic volume of 350 milliliters. And so the first thing that we're asked to calculate is the pulse pressure. Okay, so recall that the pulse pressure is just the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. So if we want to calculate the pulse pressure, it would simply be 310 millimeters of mercury minus 270 millimeters of mercury. So again, we can just plug that into the calculator. Pretty simple, 310 minus 270. And this gives us a pulse pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. All right, so that's the first thing down. The second thing we're asked to do is calculate the mean arterial pressure. Okay, so recall that mean arterial pressure was equal to the pulse pressure divided by three and then plus the diastolic pressure. Uh, we have all of these things now. So the mean arterial pressure would be the pulse pressure which was 40 millimeters of mercury. We have to divide that by three and then add on the diastolic pressure. Now in this case, the diastolic pressure was given as 270 millimeters of mercury. So in this case, our mean arterial pressure would be 40 divided by three. And we have to add on 270. And so the mean arterial pressure in this example is gonna be 283.3 repeating, and that's going to be in units of millimeters of mercury. All right. Now, if you remember back to the video where we talked about how to actually calculate mean arterial pressure, I mentioned the normal range was about 70 to 110 millimeters of mercury. Now, this is obviously a lot higher, but that range that I gave you was for a person at rest. If you have a person doing a maximal deadlift, you're going to have a mean arterial pressure that's very, very high. And so this is not valid in that range because that range is defined at rest. So you can have mean arterial pressures that are extremely elevated. The third thing we're asked to calculate is the stroke volume. So if we want to calculate the stroke volume, that's how much the ventricle ejects per beat of the cardiac cycle. That's simply the end diastolic volume which is the amount of blood in the ventricle prior to ejection, minus the end systolic volume, which is the amount of blood in the ventricle after ejection. And so we're given those values. So the stroke volume would simply be the end diastolic volume, which is 350 milliliters, minus the end systolic volume of 70 milliliters. And that would give us a stroke volume of, let's actually punch this into the calculator, 350 minus 70. 
And so our stroke volume in this case is 280 milliliters. And again, this is much higher than what we would see at rest. That's because in order to meet the demands of all the tissues, particularly skeletal muscle during exercise, the stroke volume has to be much higher. The fourth thing that we're asked to calculate is the ejection fraction. So the ejection fraction is just the percentage of blood in the ventricles uh, that's actually ejected. Okay? So if we think about the ventricles ejecting blood, there's a certain amount that is ejected, that's the stroke volume, and then it's ejected from a pool of blood in the ventricles prior to ejection, which would be the end diastolic volume. And so if I want to calculate the ejection fraction, this is just the stroke volume divided by the end diastolic volume and then times 100%. Okay, so to calculate this, the stroke volume we determined was 280, so 280 milliliters. The end diastolic volume was given as 350 milliliters, and then we would divide that out and multiply it by 100. So the ejection fraction would be 280 divided by 350. We get an answer, which is 0.8. Clearly, if I multiply by 100, that's going to be exactly 80%. So that means that out of all the blood that was in the left ventricle, normally it's the left ventricle, prior to contraction, 80% of it was ejected during that cardiac cycle. Okay, so that's my ejection fraction. The fifth thing that we're asked to calculate is the cardiac output. So sometimes it's abbreviated CO, I've always used Q. The cardiac output would simply be the heart rate times the stroke volume. So the heart rate was given. The heart rate is 170 beats per minute. And then the stroke volume is technically 280 milliliters per beat. I just put a volume unit here, but technically this is per beat. So I would have to multiply 170 by 280 milliliters per beat. Okay. And so I'm going to get, when I multiply this, 170 times 280. And I get a cardiac output of 47,000. 600, and that's going to be in units of milliliters per minute. Now, most people would not like to express a cardiac output in milliliter units. We'd want to actually use liter units. So what we can actually do is we can take this value and divide by 1,000, and we actually get this in terms of liters per minute. So this would end up being 47.6 liters per minute, and that would be my cardiac output in this moment of time. The very last thing that we're going to be asked to calculate is something called the total peripheral resistance. Okay, So if you know the mean arterial pressure, the mean arterial pressure is equal to the cardiac output, so Q, times the total peripheral resistance, normally abbreviated TPR. So if I want to calculate TPR, if I divide both sides through here by the cardiac output, then my total peripheral resistance is just equal to the mean arterial pressure divided by the cardiac output. My mean arterial pressure I calculated earlier was 283.3 millimeters of mercury. Okay. So that's going to be 283.3 repeating millimeters of mercury. And then I'm going to divide by my cardiac output. I'll use the liter per minute version which is 47.6 liters per minute. So let's actually divide this out. So I have 283.3, and then I'm going to divide by 47.6. And I kind of put this up here at the top. And what I get is a total peripheral resistance, at least the magnitude, is about 5.95. And the units would technically be, according to this, millimeters of mercury over liter per minute. And if I wanted to simplify this, it would be millimeters of mercury times minutes over liters. But the point is, this is my magnitude of the total peripheral resistance. OK, 
okay? All the resistance in the entire systemic circulature against which that output from the heart, the cardiac output, has to move against, okay? So in this video, what we've done is I've taken you ultimately, given just a small amount of data like blood pressure, heart rate, and systolic volume and, and diastolic volume, we were able to calculate a lot of different cardiovascular parameters, such as the pulse pressure, mean arterial pressure, the stroke volume, ejection fraction, cardiac output, and then given this formula, total peripheral resistance. So hopefully this made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.